Shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, and confusion of faces scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. I'm going to start off by giving all honor, praises, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shibriel Shai, and double honor to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone that rule well. I wanted to go into the diabolical duo that is the mother and the daughter and show how when they're left to their own devices, so to speak, all right, when they're given so-called freedom and liberty, as well as when they're not under the control and the guides of a man, it leads to the destruction and complete disaster in a society, okay, in a household, then in a society, in a nation, okay, which is evident through our people current day, all right, you can see how destroyed and fucked off society is because of these women, man, and a lot of times you have the mothers that are teaching their daughters complete wickedness, all right, even more so now than ever because the strong man has been bound, okay, and that's how a household is subverted when you take the control of a righteous man or a man who is at very least has some type of moral code, which even to an extent these fucking heathen had, but now everything is profligate and loose, all right? And it can be blamed on this duo, like it says, like mother, like daughter, okay? And a lot of times what they do, they teach their daughters to be whores, okay, to ride the carousel, so we're going to get an account in the scriptures, this is in Matthew 14, and 1, it says, at the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Yahushai, and said unto his servants, this is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Okay. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. So John was calling out Herod for fucking adultery. Okay. So we're going to jump in real quick. Uh, segue to the blue letter and break down this word Herodias okay we're actually just going to go into the background of her um, what would that be considered yeah her background right it says she's the daughter of, of Aristobulus the, and granddaughter of Herod the Great she was first married to Herod Philip the first son of Herod the Great, a man in private life, but afterwards formed an unlawful union with Herod Antipas, whom she induced, which was Herod Philip the first's brother, right? The Herod we know from these scriptures it says whom she induced not only to slay John the Baptist, but also to make the journey to Rome, which ruined him. At last, she followed him to exile in Gaul. Okay. So let's jump back. All right. It says, And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, okay, it says, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask, okay, and when considering the leadership of a man in the household, this wouldn't be considered, okay, because he gave his strength unto a woman by not only by committing adultery, okay, 
And you know it was from this bitch's snares and nets that she trapped him. Okay. But also by uh, granting the daughter whatever she wanted. Okay. Even that thing that he thought by better judgment not to do. Okay. Because it just mentioned that he didn't want to fucking put John the Baptist to death. But he did it against his better judgment. Because what? He, he gave his strength unto a woman. So that wouldn't be considered a strong man, right? So these cucks, these fucking pushover captains, captains, Captain Savahos, in these households, these men in these in society, that have it's likened to that being bound. Okay, they don't always have to be expelled from the house, but they could be feminized and fucking um, completely broken down. And and given the authority to the woman, man. All right. And in a lot of cases, that's what you have in this modern day society. If, if the other case, the, uh, the other scenario is just the man's just not even fucking there. And the woman is, it, the mother is influencing her daughters in the way of promiscuity and wickedness, pretty much to do what she did. And it's a, a vicious fucking cycle. All right, to ride rod and and fucking um, have multiple fathers, you know, F- uh, to be a complete adulteress, right? And then nowadays you have them influencing them to to uh, to rob a nigga, man. All right, to extort and extract whatever they can out of a nigga, man. All right. All this shit with uh, hashtag waste his time, you know, all this shit. It's crazy. It says, mm. and she being, being before instructed of her mother said, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. Okay. It says, and the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be given her, and he sent, let's see, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison, okay, and his head was brought in the charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother, okay, this is an ultimate example of the diabolical duo that can be the mother and the daughter. Hey, it could be a beautiful uh, duo, right? But it's become a diabolical duo, duo, all right? And the detriments that it can have on society is utter destruction, utter disaster, okay? Disastrous implications, all right? The scriptures tell us in Sirach 3 and 9, for the blessing of the father established the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. Okay. And the scriptures constantly cover this. It's a constant theme in these scriptures of the detriment of the woman, man. When not left, when uh, out of the natural order, that word, let everything be done in decency and decently and in order that word order means taxis a fixed succession everything was supposed to be in order at the most high set up all right and when that's not heated and abided by the whole fucking course of natural course is thrown off and it causes fucking utter destruction what when it happens when something's rooted out it's destroyed and look at our fucking people, okay? Our our women are seen as as just uh as objects, man. Okay. Our women as see are seen as the most profligate, and when you go into profligate, that means to be unbridled in the way of sexual matters, specifically promiscuous. Our women are seen in, in that light in the most of any nation. All right. 
And guess what? It spilled over to the other nations too. Because in this fucking slut culture, all the the, uh, nation's women are complete fucking whores, man. And who taught them? Right? We have, I'm not going to name names, a fucking me and Kuam, a family member, who, um, a mother-daughter duo, of course, who told her daughter to not fucking rush into a, into a, uh, what do they call that, monogamous relationship or a marriage, the traditional sense, right? Because you're married every time you fucking lay down. But listen, with everyone you lay down with, right? What happened? You told her to, before she settles down, that you're going to have to fuck a lot of frogs to find the prince. Okay? You're going to have to ride the carousel. This is in Sirach, the 42nd chapter, right? <clears throat> Salakia. Let's go ahead and start at 12. It says, Behold not everybody's beauty, and sit not in the midst of women. Okay? Because this is going to explain it. In the midst of women, that's plural. So when you're in the midst of women, when it's what it's explaining is that in a group of women, right? In the midst of a woman or a woman or women plural, like it's saying. Because why? Because look at when they're in a group or when they're together. The apostles and elders always have brought this out for fucking decades. I remember GMS on Street Twenty Two back when I when the time of our conversion, the year of our conversion, 2014, okay, watching the apostles uh, warn us about these things, about that di- uh, that uh, that diabolical duo, okay, and how they influence each other in the way of wickedness, and fucking, look, they're into all kind of witchcraft, have been, but more, more now than ever, right? But um, it, they they warned us about how when women get together, nothing fucking good, good comes out of it, man. All right? Either they fucking go out of each other's throats or they come up with some wickedness. All right? To get into. It says, from, for from garments cometh a moth and from women wickedness. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what's going to be produced from them getting together without the, of course, being uh, under the guides of Yahweh Bashim Shai, but which is what's the only way they truly get that is through their man and through, um, through a man and really through their man, okay, or father. It says in Sirach 25 and 19, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So what is really more uh, diabolical, okay? What is more malevolent? The, 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 the snares and nets and, and that which uh, we all die through, okay? <laughs> Look at what the what this has cost. Look at the fucking results of this shit. Society is completely destroyed, and it talks about um how this lewdness. This place is so run with with uh, lasciviousness and licentiousness. What do you think this whole fucking uh bugged out gender and um so called uh what is it called the 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 alphabet shit, it's ba- all that is is your fucking sexual preference, man. How could there be so much focus and attention being put on somebody just based on what they do in the fucking bedroom? Their wicked ass fucking sexual practices, right? All that, all that whole spectrum of all the different things and the categories and the, the letters that it, they represent, right? How could 
first of all, that be tied to your identity. But how could that be the focus of fucking society, man? That's why, because this place is so just loose and wicked, man. It's the whole of the law of Satanism. And we're we're about to be, this place is about to be phased the fuck out. All right. So right there, it talks about how, um, actually, you know what? Um, through the spirit, I'm going to play the clip, Lord will. And this would be considered fair use. This is not monetized in any way. Just providing commentary to prove a point. And in no wise do we ascribe to J.R. He's just another fucking Babylonian that might know a little bit about something. This happens at the end of every civilization's reign. And I think this happened with the Greeks and it happened with the Romans. Romans. It's one of the things that Douglas Murray, um, when I had him on my podcast, was discussing. He said one of the things that happens at the end of civilizations is they become obsessed with gender. Mm. It's a, it's a thing that happens where men start becoming women, and women start becoming men, and it becomes like a big fo focus, like cross dressing and all this stuff becomes a a big point of focus. And I was like, well, why is that? He goes, it it seems to be that they're dissolving all boundaries and all norms and all societal structure, and that's a part of it. It's like gender roles. When you... This happens at the end. So it's it's uh it's like the end of morality. Okay. Morals going out the fucking door, and they see that at the end of societies because that's when it that's those are signs and tokens of its destruction. Okay, moral moral deterioration. Okay, and no time greater than now, when there's new innovation in the in this uh, category new constant new innovation to do new wicked fucking shit in this in this wise all right to be uh licentious lascivious fucking profligate okay to be doing a wicked abominable acts that's going to destroy a society and that's ultimately the detriment of this this loose society okay Proverbs 31 and 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So the consequences are fucking disastrous. All right. To allow them to team up and further degrade society into the point of no fucking return, man. Okay. You leave them to their devices of fucking freedom and liberty and authority, right? Because what does it mean when you give your ways into someone, you're giving them authority, you're relinquishing, uh, and you're capitulating, okay? And that's the, the commonplace case that you have in this modern-day society to where it has caused absolute destruction, Okay? What happened to that nigga fucking Herod? It said it led to his ruin. Okay, so allowing them to team up has caused the destruction of this kingdom. Okay. And it's ultimately going to be to where when they go back into subjection in the kingdom, it's going to be known that putting these creatures in any type of authority is going to end to end in ruin. All right. So with that, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Shimei, Hashai, Baha Shem, Raka, Kadash. All right. The patriarchy is about to come back into effect. The Most High's eternal patriarchy. Okay. Salawam.